Chapter 4. Leader Alambro Lambrobu, Miscellaneous, Personal. Vegetarianism Fasting, and Dry Fasting. H. Eat No Man's Food for Naught. First Bible Lesson, 2 Thessalonians Chapter 3 Verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Second Bible Lesson, Ephesians Chapter 4 Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Golden Text, Luke chapter 16 verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Brethren, that is the theme of our revelation this morning, it is what is called the recondite wisdom. This knowledge has eluded the whites and all humanity. Listen with rapt attention for something spectacular has happened. When I look at you and the whole world, tears roll down my face, for you. You are all blind. You should be very observant, all the preaching I deliver from January to December are about myself. I have not read them from any book, neither have I read them from the Bible, but I have practically used them. They are therefore nothing but the truth. I thank God immensely for the Holy Bible. It has helped me a little, for, when I speak, I quote from the Bible. If the Bible were not available people would have questioned the source of the teachings. I tell you, if I had not come, the whole world would have perished. It is a veritable truth, these teachings do not come from here. Think of it, somebody who has not been taught in any school yet he teaches. This is what shows, he is the supernatural teacher. If these Gospels are documented and circulated, they will save many lives, but I do not know what the people at the Gospel Center are doing. They do not write these Gospels out. Do you know, for you to eat somebody's food, for dog is an act of overdraft against you. It could be likened to having not a cobra in the bank and yet borrowing 10,000 Naira. If you squander that amount collected from the bank, it becomes a debt to you. If somebody gives you something and you take it freely, you become indebted and may even die with such indebtedness. This is why many people in this part of the world die with debts. You deposit a small amount of money but borrow very much more, and lavish it. Don't you know, you are indebted to the bank, and that your indebtedness will lead you to your wit's end. It is also like somebody who signs a surety for another person, who goes to borrow money, say 2000 Naira, if he does not pay, you will be held responsible. If he does not pay, you will surely be held. Again it can be likened to somebody who rents a bicycle, a room or any other thing for say 5 Naira. The debt will be piling up, if he is unable to redeem it in the end. The natural law is, you should eat nobody's food for naught. Rather, you should labor with your hands to feed yourself. The moment you take somebody's food without giving back anything commensurate with it, that is reciprocation, you have contravened the law, and this leads to donation. The situation can further be likened to somebody who wins a contract and receives part of the money in advance. Such people do not even do the work and are thus on their way to perish. This is what brings pandemonium and problems on us, because the moment you eat anybody's food freely, you have contravened the law. It is against this background that in the civil service you have to work hard to the end of the month, before you are paid. Anybody paid in advance has to work hard in exchange to merit the payment received. All of us are witnesses to the fact, if you go to somebody and he gives you food, the way you eat differs much from, when you prepare it yourself. Similarly, your pattern of expenditure will be different, if you pick money from the ground from, when you toil for it. Don't you know, when you enjoy the rainy season you are indebted to the dry season, and when you enjoy the dry season you are indebted to the rainy season? Are you not aware of this truth? This is, why you are called all sorts of names, wizard, apparition, bloodsucker, juju, etc. They point accusing fingers at you. When you go to somebody's house he kills a goat, for you, but when he comes to you, you fail to kill Sane in reciprocation. Don't you know he will go about to blackmail you? You have to pay back spiritually. That is why, in an accounting system, when you want to balance your accounts, and you have a one cobo surplus you have to find out and correct it, so they balance or else you will be imprisoned. Can you then not realize, there is an error? If not, why the surplus? Even if it happens in an office, where you can control millions of naira, the surplus of one cobo will have to be checked well to know, where it comes from. In the same token, if there is a shortage of one cobo, you will not be set free. 
you will have to find it, because, if you fail you will be jailed. When you hear of accountants, they are blessed and are well versed in economics. Here, in this kingdom we believe in spiritual values. If somebody gives you 10 naira, and you fail to pay anything back commensurate with it, such a value is subtracted from your spiritual account. No, if somebody gives you 1000 naira, that will be taken away together with interest from your spiritual account to balance it. In this kingdom you cannot cheat anybody. The principle of live and let live operates, and you are to work for your daily bread. That is why, during the days of our ancestors, they were servants and slaves. They labored and toiled, and by so doing they were building up their spiritual accounts. They therefore became rich in no time. You must labor and toil with your hands, so in the end you reap bountifully. You must first of all labor with your hands, before you eat, but now the reverse is the case. Everybody goes about wanting to eat gratis. In this kingdom no one eats freely. You must work, before you eat. If you see any wealthy person today know, he has suffered, toiled and labored. When you see such a person you say, he has struck gold. This is not so. It is just, because he has toiled and should reap his reward. The scripture says, whatsoever a man sows he reappeth. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. For you to bid somebody farewell without giving him anything, what sort of farewell is that? Don't you know, if you eat somebody's food freely you are worse than an armed robber. You can now realize why the children of the rich men cannot do well in education. Even, before education reached the present height, the children of the affluent were not sent to school, they were told to stay at home and enjoy, while the slaves and their children were sent to schools. You can then see the state of those school labor. When somebody goes to school and after graduation builds a house, buys a car and enjoys life you must remember, the suffering he has gone through can hardly be imagined. He goes through hard times and sufferings, and in the end people say, oh, he is blessed. It is not, he is blessed, but, he is reaping what he sowed through toiling and suffering. All the Nigerians studying overseas labor 24 hours each day. Outside their school work they do menial jobs to earn their living. Sometimes they move from, where they live to other places only to labor to sustain themselves, and in the end they reap bountifully and enjoy from their sweat. You have heard, as the scripture says, if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Luke chapter 16 verse 12. You are to labor with your hands for your own otherwise you lose much. Why our teachings are powerful is, we talk about our own city. I was not taught, neither did I receive it in any dream. If you go about begging, cheating and deceiving people, what do you think you are doing? If somebody should give me money, when I have done nothing to merit, I will ask why and will not take it. Think of how the bush rat reasons. Use the palm fruit, as a bait to make a trap for it. On seeing the fruit he will know, palm fruits are always on top of the palm tree and not on the ground. If the fish is reasonable he will know, the bait is a hook and not free. He will therefore know, by taking the bait he is invariably swallowing the hook, which may kill him. You can now see, why you must obey the natural law, by laboring and toiling for your own food. All the mistakes you make in your life emanate from the fact, you do not want to labor for your own food. God does not give food to an idle man. You must always use your hands to labor for your daily bread. Even if somebody gives you something, it is equally subtracted from your spiritual accounts. I don't want any person in this kingdom to go about begging for what to eat. Do not place your hopes on your carnal father's and mother's wealth. Instead, use your hands to labor for your own. If somebody gives you something you should do something for him in return. Even if that person is your parent do not eat his or her food for naught. When you hear, somebody is poor or has gone bankrupt, he is one that goes borrowing, robbing Peter to pay Paul. If somebody offers to take you in his car, do not enter freely. Give him something commensurate in value with the distance you cover. You see how the white men do it. If they travel from here to Mopu they calculate the meters covered and pay its exact value to the driver. If somebody gives you advice, for example, you should give him something in return, otherwise, the advice will not work. This is the first commandment man has lost. Do not eat any man's food for naught. Instead, labor with your hands for your daily bread. Look at Abraham. When his wife Sarah died, he went to the community in which he lived and informed them, his wife had gone on eternal transfer. 
He then asked for land to bury her. Knowing Abraham was a good child of God, they offered to give him land freely. Abraham would not take it as a free gift so he brought a commensurate amount of money to pay for the land. The elders of the community did not want to take it, but he pressed it upon them, and they finally accepted the money. As a result, Abraham owns that land forever. Genesis chapter 23 verses 15 to 19. Think about it. If you are given land freely and later the children of the owner turn in his absence to claim it back, what will be your position? If I should go on to reveal the disadvantages of the theme of today's gospel to you, you will realize, it is this that has brought about the downfall of many people, but I only want to give it in a nutshell. Let our first lesson be read. First Bible lesson, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Today, brethren, are you not chargeable to your neighbor, and do you know the destination of your action? A commensurate amount of what you have been receiving from here and there, has been subtracted from your spiritual accounts and that is, why you are suffering. Nothing is surplus to the one that has much, and the one that has little is not suffering either. How come you go to somebody's house every now and then, and each time you go he gives you food? You describe such as interesting, and I ask, how? Is the money he uses falling from heaven? Why do you want to live in somebody's house really? If it were not difficult to build a house why can't you construct your own? Is it built freely? All those looking for things gratis, can they say there is nothing in their body? Somebody carries you in his car, don't you know, he bought the car, bought petrol and serviced it with money. And when you get down from it you just say, thank you. Can he use your thank you to service or maintain the car? This is the cause of the downfall of mankind. You want to eat freely? Look at the attitudes of the white man. When he parks his car in your car and goes somewhere, he will make sure that on coming back he gives you something for your service to him. Somebody says, he wants to live with you and serve you for no remuneration. Don't you know, he is an armed robber. Similarly, if you employ somebody without paying him, don't you know, you are a duper. The whites have not been able to practice any gospel, but they have a pass in the practice of this very one. Have you ever seen any white man giving money to an idle man? They do not believe in the concept of generosity, giving away money freely. Instead they give you a job and pay you accordingly. As for charity, they are against it, because they know, no man should eat another man's food for naught. On the other hand the black man will give you drink, food, etc. freely and when that happens you reach your wit's end. All the dupers, deceivers and the like give money and other things freely. When they give you, be observant and you will see what happens, for such gifts are all from Satan. When somebody tells you to receive something for naught, don't. Rather, ask him, how he will want you to pay for it. In this kingdom, I don't want anybody to go begging. In all situations, I want everyone to labor with his hands for his daily bread. Blackmail, bad luck, penury and all other adversities in life emanate from eating somebody's food for naught. It is said, it is not he who recommends himself, but he that is recommended by God. If you receive something God has not given you, you have already crucified yourself. You can realize, the governments of this world are not functioning. This is the government of God. That is why, he has given us hands, legs, eyes and all other parts of the body, to use to fend for ourselves. That is why, if somebody is blind, he is still given a kind of education that befits him such that after graduation he can work and have something to eat. In the same vein, that is why, if somebody is deaf, or is a cripple, or having his hands or legs amputated, he is equally given a befitting education that eventually aids him to fend for himself. This is the law of nature, no man should eat any other man's food for naught, and that no idler should be given food. If somebody gives you food to eat in a day, will you toil again in that day? Can you then realize, in the spiritual world something is subtracted from your accounts to pay for what you eat freely? When you are hungry you must labor, toil and travail to make ends meet for that is the law of nature. This, I preach of myself. Even though I may have money on my waist, I still toil to eat. There is no single day I do not toil to eat. There is no single day I do not toil for my feeding. This is why there is multiplicity of trades and occupations in the white man's land. 
Immediately you descend from an airplane, somebody comes to clean your shoes and do other things for you, even without asking for anything. If you want poor and wretched people come to the African countries. Look at the situation in Fernando Po, where our people went to offer cheap labor for money. No matter how small, you are paid, and so it is with the Roman Catholics, no matter how little, they make sure they pay for the services you render them. Therefore, this is the first commandment in this kingdom. Eat no man's food for naught. Instead, labor with your hands for your food and do not feed an idle man. Don't be charitable to any person. If you go on ministry work to any Bethel and immediately sweep and wash dirty things there, know the type of blessing you receive is special. Our guiding principle is live and let live. If you eat somebody's food for naught, that is what brings about frequent incidents of problems, because, if you eat another man's food for naught you have fallen. If you look at the example given you, about accounting, the moment you discover a surplus when balancing, you have to check and correct it otherwise you cheat somebody. Similarly when there is shortage you have to correct it, since that connotes, you have been duped. If you give things to people freely without requiring they should pay back anything at all, don't you realize, your accounts won't balance. It simply means, you have given them your livelihood. All of you have accounts, and if after consuming you still have surplus, it means, you have duped somebody somewhere. The world knows not this, but God knows it is the law of nature. The moment you put it aside, sufferings and problems begin. Anyone who knows the intricacies of this will never cheat any person, not even a child and such a person will be received everywhere. No disdainful word will ever be spoken against him. Assuming somebody comes to you and you minister unto him. If after the first visit, it becomes his habit to come frequently and you continue ministering unto him, even if he is a pastor, how will you regard him? He has invariably sold his own right to you by that action. We should all live within the confines of the dictum, live and let live. There is no obscurity, no diplomacy and nothing is hidden in this gospel. At all times we should labor with our hands to feed ourselves. You argue, you do not know what sin you have committed and I ask, have you not eaten somebody's food for naught? The English have a saying, ignorance is no excuse in law. Search the scriptures and see, if you have eternal life. The people who have been ministering unto you, what have you done to reciprocate their kind gestures to you? Don't you know, they are the cause of your problems? If you have the Holy Spirit in you, he will help you out of all the problems. If not, how could I have done this work? I have not read anything anywhere. You can't see the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10 verse 45. He told his disciples, whoever wants to lead will first of all have to be a servant. Matthew chapter 20 verse 27. He also said, whoever wants to be the greatest among you will first serve as your messenger. He again told them, he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Matthew chapter 23 verse 11. You can realize, these teachings are all the same with what we have received today. You enjoy the fan and all other things without paying anything in reciprocation. This is what has brought problems to mankind. Read the second lesson. Second Bible lesson, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Brethren, have you heard that? God has given us our hands to labor with, so as to have what to eat, because all the intelligence and knowledge he has bestowed on mankind are to help us to find food to eat. That money you picked on the road, you have stolen, because it is for somebody else. When you hear somebody has struck gold, and he has become very rich it simply means, another person has fallen down and his downfall has registered in the other one's success. As I have been seeing here, people go successively to an individual to demand from him, and if eventually he becomes poor, is that from God? It is greed that disturbs you. If somebody has one naira and you do not collect it, you cannot sleep. But God has told us, let him that stole, steal no more, but labor and travail with his hands, so he may have what to eat. Fetching water, sweeping the ground, laundry, and taking care of little children are all jobs which one can do to earn a living. For whosoever labors is wealthy. Even if your hands are amputated, if you are dropped somewhere, somebody will see you and will pity you. 
If somebody that is blind or deaf goes about shouting, people will hear and take to their heels. All of us have our own personal files and no man is deceiving you. All your files have been brought here and it is important that each person should use his hands to look for his meals. If you do not use your hands and you become poor you are responsible. Every one of you is responsible for the situation in which you find yourself. Even if your father is a millionaire, struggle for your own. Don't be solely dependent on him. If somebody gives you something, he seals your mouth and ties you to his apron strings. Why is it, you are so indebted to your neighbor? This happens, when he continues to be kind, generous and benevolent to you all the time. He gives you your needs and when anything happens between you, he will prove his case. Somebody can deceive you but nobody can deceive God. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. All of you can be foolish but God is not stupid. I am not saying, if somebody gives you something you should not take it, but, you should also do something for him to reciprocate his kindness to you. If you are a person going about seeking for other people's help, stop and labor with your hands, otherwise, you will not have even a pin. What you don't use your hands to labor, for is what you withdraw from your spiritual bank accounts. Those you receive from others are your spiritual overdraft. Some people have reincarnated three times yet they continue to pay off their indebtedness. If you fail to pay your debts, nothing will be of avail to you. Do you think, this is the only plane of manifest? You think you are faster than the other man but you can never be faster than God. Even if somebody sells something which is 20 naira for 50 naira the surplus is not for him. If you buy something for 50 naira and sell it for 100 naira you should not use that difference in total. You have to give heart back to him. What is called righteousness is that thankful heart. He gives you a house, a woman, money and many other things freely and why can't you give him something in reciprocation, so an equilibrium is reached. What has made the indigenes of the Cross River State, Akraidam State and all other people poor is, they have not known this. When they see you have money, every one of them will beg you for some, till you become bankrupt, and when you become poor, no one comes to your aid. You profess to know God. Have you known, you are to labor with your hands to find what to eat. If ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Luke chapter 16 verse 12. You will remain a failure. This is the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ said, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee, before the world was. John chapter 17 verse 5. Do anything at all, you can lay your hands on, and God will bless you. If I should tell you what you lose by taking 20 naira from somebody you will be surprised, for, you lose not less than 1000 naira from your spiritual accounts. In the same way, if you give something to somebody you are at the receiving end. In fact, if you give out 10 naira you receive not less than 1000 naira in your accounts. Apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, who on earth knew this. You argue, you cannot be a servant to any other person. You ask what another person has given you. Why can't you give something now to somebody too? All those that enter through other gates apart from the main one are all thieves. I have worked very hard and I still continue to work. I do not eat anybody's food for naught. This is, because, in the kingdom of God that principle does not exist. What you use your hands on, same do you eat from. Why the other person describes you, as an abominable fellow is, he always gives you something, and you are not able to do anything for him in return. Before the face of God, if somebody gives you honor, you should reciprocate. If you fail to reciprocate and it is brought before him, you will be condemned, because he honored you, but you failed to honor him. Brethren, I do not want to be tedious unto you, so listen to the golden text. You who are looking for somebody to help you, but can't do anything for him. Golden text, Luke chapter 16 verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Have you heard it? Can you realize, you are born as a little child, and as a child you have to serve somebody so, as you grow somebody also serves you. When the disciples asked, our Lord Jesus Christ should strengthen their faith, the Lord said, if ye had faith, as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sickening tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Luke chapter 17 verse 6. You come to brotherhood to ask for airplane, car, children and other worldly things. What have you done to qualify for them? 
Don't you know you take them free of charge? Our Lord Jesus Christ who is the leader, what does he possess? From the time he was born he suffered and still continues suffering. What has he enjoyed for all that? That is why, Peter asked our Lord Jesus Christ, Behold, we have forsaken all, and followed thee, what shall we have therefore? Matthew chapter 19 verse 27. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Matthew chapter 19 verses 28 and 29. Now about 99% of the inhabitants of this earth want to pass through windows into the house. Like the launching we did here yesterday, to buy a bus to convey people from Biapin. All of you who did not contribute anything from where do you think we can have the bus? If now we have it, it is the result of our own sweat. Therefore you realize, if you don't say what you are, nobody will take cognizance of you. If you don't labor with your hands, you cannot have your daily bread. You should not be chargeable to anybody. Among the Gospels, the easiest one to practice is that of today. It is the only path unto salvation. This is, because out of all the struggles of your own, those you do with your hands are your bona fide property, and God rewards you in abundance for them. This instruction, you should know, is not that of man. It is a laid down principle in this kingdom. In all situations, we must labor with our hands unto ourselves, unto God and unto others, or we lose. Put differently, it can also be called a thankful heart. One person out of the ten who were healed by our Lord Jesus Christ came back to thank him for the miracle he performed to show he had a thankful heart. Luke chapter 17 verses 13 to 18. This is to all brotherhood members worldwide, labor with your hands. Do not beg and do not be chargeable to somebody else. Do any small work, even if you sweep, so you can have what to eat. I have told you several times, we have employment opportunities, food, wealth and everything you are looking for here. As poor people are easy to identify, so also are employment opportunities abundant in this kingdom. Even, as we are talking, if you go out, take water and wash the cars outside, that is, if you want to abide by this teaching, you should labor with your hands and not be chargeable to anybody, the owners of the cars will be very delighted to give you something. As you come here, if you help any sick person you see, and help strangers by taking their bags and leading them to the guest house or by giving them seats to sit on, they will also be happy to give you something to eat. Why can't you perform all these things? What your child, father, mother, grandchild and others give you do not help you. If you don't use your hands and labor, all will be of nullity to you. Now people argue why the father does not give way for others to preach. Pastor B.J. Eddick testified, all the father is doing, same are being done in Eden and Bethel and I say, you wait. What I am doing, the same shall all the inhabitants of the world do. It is astonishing, I have never been taught. I went to farm and used my hands to do all things. If you give something to me and I know I can't do anything to reciprocate, I shall not take it. If I know you have 50 pogo and you give me one naira, I will not take it to owe the difference of 50 pogo. For it is said, a word is enough for the wise. You pray God should give you somebody to do good to you. Do you know, you have handed all your wealth over to him? What is the significance of the scriptural statement? Oh no man anything but love. Romans chapter 13 verse 8. This means, if somebody does something to you, you should reciprocate, that is, you should also do something in return for that. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said, when he shall come, he will lead you to the accurate knowledge of the truth. John chapter 16 verse 13. Have you seen this accurate wisdom? Why somebody becomes so rich, you become petrified is because he has done something for you. He has given you all the good things of life and is expecting you to pay back, otherwise, you are still hanging on his apron strings. I do not want to give any gospel of why people are in penury. Why civil servants are poor is, they rely on their pay, which is rather meager. They ask, why the accounts of their employers are credited, and wonder, why they are poor, because they say, they are the servants that minister unto them. 
That is why, the ideal situation is to be independent. The moment you start your own business independently, you will become very rich. Have you ever seen a civil servant who is a millionaire? Even if he is, he embezzles and the punishment awaits him. Brethren, I do not want to be tedious with you. It is said, one stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Let those who have ears hear, and may God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you Father, 